Welcome back. In this episode of Oxygen Not Included, we're going to be taking another look here at the self-powered oxygen production system here using electrolyzers. If you remember back to my previous video, I had a couple of setups. One of them was an electrolyzer with a hydro hood above it, and that was an open system, and that system worked pretty well, and it's self-powered, and it was all you know, fine and dandy. However, it also requires a little bit more space and it's kind of an open system. The enclosed system I tested after that ended up not being self-powering, but there were several comments that you guys left me over here in the comment section about self-powering systems that are enclosed or semi-enclosed. So I'm gonna be doing a little bit of testing there. And there was also a bit of a discrepancy that um, was uncovered about the amount of hydrogen that was being produced and the amount of power that was being produced. But the main thing we're gonna cover here is a couple of enclosed or semi-enclosed systems that you can put into your base that are going to be self-powered. And we'll also look into the reason behind why they actually work because it's a little bit of a bug within the game currently. As you can see here, I have a couple of different systems set up here. Let me just take you through them. On the left is a very conventional system. So we have an electrolyzer, the hydrogen's gonna go up top, and the oxygen is gonna go to the bottom. You can see here that it's separated. This thing's been off for several cycles. We have atmospheric switches that turn the gas pumps on or off, and this is, you know, pretty standard. Now the system here in the middle was actually based off a comment left by Renick here if I can get this Windows 10 to cooperate. Speaking of which, my computer just actually destroyed itself. I turned it off just the other day. Um, it hung up as it was powering off for some odd reason. You know, I let it sit for 10 minutes, hit the power button. It turned on in the middle of the night like a zombie and proceeded to destroy itself. So I actually had to reinstall Windows as of yesterday. So I'm going through the struggles of setting all this stuff up yet again. But you know what, at least uh, it hasn't been too bad and I have all my saved files. I backed up everything because I've been through this more than a few times. But if the camera and all that fun stuff is off a little bit, um, well, one, the sun's out there and I've had to reset up OBS, whatever. A bit of a rant, a bit of a story, but Renick here uh, left a design that was kind of, not that one, there it is, this one right here. And what you can see here, it's a very simple setup using the electrolyzer, a pump, and a filter right there. The one thing I have noticed though is that in this picture is that they're using, they're in a current, but yeah. <laughs> what I'm struggling to say is that the game build is different between this picture here and this setup and then the build that I'm running currently. So this may or may not still work and that actually leads to the reason why I have an atmospheric switch there. The system here on the far right is inspired by a form post that many people have applied their expertise and knowledge to as far as trying to understand what was that problem with hydrogen slightly deleting itself. So I'll have to leave a link to this down there because this is a very, very long post and people did a lot of work here. So Nano D kind of kicked this thing off and then there was many other people that have chimed in here with Life Grow, one of the senior members. Uh, several others have kind of put their own testing into it here and then Kasha also kind of chimed in here. And eventually they all worked together and came up with this you know, consensus that yes, the electrolyzer is having a little bit of a problem and it has to do with the overpressurizing, more or less being that the hydrogen doesn't have a place to go, so therefore it just gets deleted and that ratio isn't eight to one like you would expect. Now the trick here you can see in Kasha's post and what this is doing here is that the hydrogen is covering up half of the electrolyzer. So as this thing is producing both oxygen and hydrogen, hydrogen has some place to attach to and oxygen also has another place to attach to. So therefore it isn't getting deleted. And that's the trick in order to getting more hydrogen out of this electrolyzer or getting the advertised amount out of it as opposed to getting less than that. So thank you to everybody for working so hard to figure all this stuff out. And thank you guys for pointing me over here in the right direction. So thanks to Timothy and Sandgrain1 for hitting me up with those links right there. So, so let's take a more in-depth look at system number one over here. Enabling the electrolyzer here, you can see that the hydrogen wants to flow up towards the top. And then I have an atmospheric switch that is set at 1.5 kilograms. That just seems to be a good number for whatever reason. Down here on the bottom, I have the same thing. I have a little gas pump set up and its pressure is going to be set at above 700 grams. So in order to do a little bit of testing and experimenting here, what I'm going to do is let this run 
for the next five cycles. So I'll let this run up to cycle 40, and then I'll begin my benchmark test to see just how much oxygen and energy and all that fun stuff I'm getting out of it. So from 40 through 44, and then I'll do the numbers kind of like you've seen in the previous videos. And then I'll roll back to the save point and run the other experiments. So that way everything here should be pretty close to about these, the same as we're gonna be able to get. All right, so a quick observation here of system number one is that it is continuing to hold a charge. It's self-powering at this point. No, no charge is being introduced into this system at anywhere except for from itself. So I can actually disconnect this one just to kind of prove my point right there is that it is actually holding a charge. The one thing I have noticed though is that every once in a while a little bit of oxygen is finding its way into this hydrogen generator, damaging it every so ever so slightly. So I either need to turn up the uh, switch here a little bit more in order to avoid that damage or I just need to run a filter which is probably the better choice of the two. All right, so let's take a look at the results here for system number one. What we can see here is that this thing on average created 151 kilograms of oxygen a day. Not a lot, really, not a lot at all. Uh, with that, 132 uh, kilojoules of power was created, only 32.7 kilojoules of power was used in the creation of that oxygen, therefore leaving us with an average net of 99 kilojoules. Now you can see this in the reports over here over the last couple of days. We could see that cycle 45 and back, I actually started this on 41 as you can see down there. You see 84, 93, 101, 122. But here's the thing that I did just to kind of BS test this, right? So what I did is I hooked up on the beginning of cycle 41, eight more additional batteries. That way I could count up the total amount of power that is stored within these batteries. And what we could see here is we have 24.7 in the two that were on the system, just to see if it is self-sustaining. And then I have all of these up here. So that's eight more. And then you can count up the power that's available in all of those. So what that gives us is a couple of different reports. The net report, so that is all of these nets added together over those five cycles, there should be 498 kilojoules of power available. However, when you count up what is actually stored inside of the batteries, what we end up with is 115 kilojoules. Another thing to compare here is my theoretical, what I should be getting out of my hydrogen generation, which is 152 kilojoules, and that the real life test is a little bit less. So what we can learn from that is that a little bit of hydrogen is being lost somewhere within the system, so it's not creating as much power. But here's the real kicker. I think the difference between this number and that number is caused because for some odd reason that power that is being generated there is not finding its way to the batteries. And if you look at the power loop here, there's really nothing keeping it from getting over to these powers. It's not plugged back into the, any of the rest of the grid. It's also not reporting any power wasted because I have all of these batteries connected to it. So while according to the reports and also according to the theoretical calculations, I should have a whole lot more power available, but in practice, the system is not storing a lot of the power that it is making. So what's the takeaway from this? Well, even though the system is saying that it's making a ton of power and that there should be a lot of extra power that's being stored each day, as it turns out, there really isn't that much power being made. For some odd reason, there's something going on here and it isn't quite right. So this system may not be as productive as it appears. All right, so there you have it. That is system one. For, so for those of you guys that were saying, put the pump on top and put the pump on the bottom, well, yes, it does work. You can make a self-contained system right there that does produce oxygen. And it is self-contained and self-powering, so that's all nice and good and dandy. So let's go ahead and roll back the clock and look into system number two. All right, so let's take a look at Renick's system here. You can see very simply what it's supposed to be like. So let me go ahead and just make this system exactly as it is. All right, so here's Renick's system. It is up and running. We got both oxygen and hydrogen. That's all gonna be finding its way into the top part of this chamber. This pump is constantly running. Every once in a while, a little hydrogen will find its way up there into this low pressure area, and that'll get filtered out and run into the hydrogen generator but a lot of oxygen is gonna find its way out over here. Any of the extra oxygen that's being produced but not being picked up by this pump is gonna find its way out through this little vent right over here. So you can see that we started off with a little bit of power up here, but unfortunately this system here in its current setup, just like I have it running right here uh, with about 
just a little over one kilogram of oxygen outside of here is that it isn't quite creating enough power in order to maintain its its self so it's unfortunately it will eventually run out of power even though it's very very close to self-sustaining and i think this has to do with just the difference in the build right here there's probably a little something else going on all right, so I'm going to make a little bit of a change to Renex system here, and that's adding an Atmos switch. And rather than place it, uh, turn it to above, I'm going to have it turned down to below. For whatever reason, I'm struggling with my words today, so just bear with me. There's going to be a lot of breaks. I'm stumbling over my words. Um, so what we can see here, though, is what this is going to do is it's going to look for pockets of low pressure hydrogen. So hydrogen will be up in this area, but since there isn't a lot of it, it's going to be at a very low pressure. So once hydrogen finds its way over here in this top right chamber, the atmospheric switch will find it and turn that pump on. However, most of the time, it will be above this pressure. Pressure. <laughs> Okay, so if we watch this switch here, watch, see how its pr current pressure is very high? And then all of a sudden, it'll find a pocket of low pressure. And what that is, it's a little bit of hydrogen finding its way over this switch at a low enough pressure in order to trip it. So look at this, it's over two, two grams right now, two kilograms. And there it is, boop, it just flips on. So the idea is that this thing will find its way on every once in a while, but it's only going to find its way on once enough hydrogen is up there in order to flip it. Okay, so what I can see right here is that the power is actually maintaining itself. It's pretty much right up there about 40 kilojoules on this large battery. I'm going to make a little bit of an adjustment though. I'm going to move this filter down and put this atmospheric switch over here so that it's three tiles wide and doesn't have this one weird spot. So I'll set this to 800 grams or so. It really is going to depend on how much oxygen or what your average level of oxygen is within the base to a point. I mean this electrolyzer is going to create a lot of pressure in this area. But we'll see how that works. It is self-powering at this point though. All right, so here are the results for system number two. And as we can see, comparing that to system number one, it has the exact same amount of oxygen production at 151 kilograms a day, which is really surprising considering how much different the two are. The power created was a little bit less on system two. However, it also seemed a little bit more consistent. So maybe a little bit more hydrogen is finding its way getting deleted or whatever, maybe. Average amount of power used, pretty much not much difference between the two, 35 kilojoules, giving us a net average power of 92.5, or an average watts, 154. All right, well, here's where things get interesting, and by interesting, I mean head scratching, right? So the total net reported power, if you add up all of the net powers together, you get 462 kilojoules. That's less than system one. However, the amount of power that's counted up in these batteries is actually more than system one by quite a bit. You're talking about a difference between 115 kilojoules in the last system compared to 211 kilojoules. We'll look a little bit more into this after we do experiment number three. All right, so here is system number three. Now this was inspired by somebody who sent me this link right here, and that was kind of interesting. It was also heavily inspired by the reports that I saw over here on that form page, right? Okay, so the one thing I'm gonna do here to system three is I'm gonna make it look a lot more like what Kasha and all that stuff has actually created here. Now there's many, many different variations of this same sort of setup. I mean, people have done some really creative stuff with wheeze warts and all that fun stuff, but I'm not gonna get into that. What I am going to do is lower this down by one tile. Now, uh, there is a little bit of risk involved in running that so low, some oxygen could potentially get back up over here and into the left chamber. However, if you set it up and you set it up in a stable manner, it should be self-filtering and you shouldn't need that filter up there. All right, so right off the bat, we can see that this system here is running quite well. It has plenty of power. You can see the batteries, they drop down a little bit, and then they get filled right back up as far as the amount of power it has inside of it. So if we look at the gas, you know, I disconnected that filter so you can see the little loop right there, but yeah, it's self-powering itself and it's working just fine. All right, here we go. Experiment number three. I just plugged in eight extra batteries up here. Let's see what we get. It's continued to self-power for the last five cycles. No problem at all. And we can see that no damage has found its way over to the hydrogen generator, so not having any problem filtering these two zones. And being that it's enclosed, it also makes it, you know, quite safe. 
there's a chance that polluted oxygen could like float over here and try to get up in there and mess some stuff up find its way into the pump and cause some problems for your hydrogen generator I like the enclosed system nice and simple all right, so here's the results here for system number three. We saw a slight increase in the amount of oxygen being produced, so it went up to 166.34. Eh, that was pretty good. The amount of power that we created was 161 kilojoules a day, which is quite a bit up from the other two systems. Matter of fact, when we go ahead and take those numbers and put it into my calculator up here, what we'll see is that I was expecting to get 167.84. So that's right there with the theoretical maximum. So that's pretty cool to see that we've actually solved that problem and I was able to produce some results that backed up what people were finding in that forums uh, with Kasha and everybody else that was over there. So I can confirm that my system, much like this system right here, is running at that 1 to 8 ratio. On average, this system consumed 40.8 kilojoules of power. And that is, again, a little bit up from the other two systems right there giving us an average net power of 120 kilojoules. The total net report was 601 kilojoules, and then the amount that's actually stored in the batteries is 255.2. So overall, what we can see here is that system number three is our highest performer. It's also the most consistent of all the systems tested. Now, is this the most optimal setup for this? I doubt it is. There's many people that have been trying to optimize this, you know, beyond this. But the trick is that this electrolyzer is half in hydrogen so that we don't get some of that loss of hydrogen. And then the oxygen goes out the bottom, the hydrogen goes out the top. I'm expecting at some point they'll look at this electrolyzer and kind of change it. But right now, this is what we have in the current build of the game. All right, well, I was curious to see if I could find out what was causing the big difference between the net reported and what I was actually counting out of the battery. So I ran system number three a couple of more times. One, I just re-ran the experiment to see if there was a big variance. And uh, the third time, the second time, I guess, third time I ran it, uh, I ran a, a very long power cable right here. So here's the results. And what we can see here is system number one had a total report of 601 and then the difference between what was in the batteries and that was 346 and then we see 347 and 341. So there's really not much of a difference, just pretty much standard numbers. There's not a huge difference. Uh, so the length of the electrical cable really had nothing to do with this. I just know that there's a lot of comments that are going to be popping in about those batteries down there and, you know, all the myths that revolve around it. So at one point, I'll have to cover these batteries and kind of look into that stuff, but I have not found the, the reason why those numbers are so different. Now, we know how System 3 operates, but what I wanted to see is how this compares to the hood. Because you know what? The hood is pretty simple, and electrolyzers, they like to be in open spaces. So, that'll be interesting. Now, obviously, an electrolyzer in an open uh, atmosphere is going to depend, you know, quite a bit more on how much just oxygen is in that space. Because if it's higher pressure, then that's not going to run as much. But, you know, for such a simple setup, I kind of want to see how this kind of just compares. All right, so we have some interesting results here with the Hydra Hood. It actually generated about the exact same amount of oxygen as system number three. We're talking 170 kilograms as compared to 166, which is really cool to see because we have an enclosed system as compared to an open system doing about the same thing. And then the power that was created here, however, was quite a bit less. And I think what we're seeing there is some of that hydrogen is being deleted. So... Um, we're getting much less compared to what we have. That ratio is off a little bit. However, the power used is also quite a bit less in the Hydra Hood system because it's simpler. Um, so you see that is at 12.8 kilojoules as compared to 40. So the average net power was also less and therefore the total net report as far as the total number of kilojoules that was added up over the five cycles was there was 557 kilojoules compared to 601 so quite a bit less however check this out right back here what we see is i had to add more batteries because i was filling up everything so the total amount that was stored was 380 kilojoules as compared to 255 so that difference right there is 175 kilojoules as compared to the what is reported and what is actually counted in the batteries 
So that difference is 175 kilojoules for the Hydra Hood, but that difference up on system number three is 346 kilojoules. So here's my hypothesis, guys. I think it has to do with this hydrogen generator. I don't think it's creating power that is being stored at the beginning and the end of its cycle. I feel like somehow something's getting cut off there, so that power isn't making its way to the batteries. That's my hypothesis. I'm not 100% sure if it's gonna be true or not. We might have to do a little bit more experimenting. Maybe you guys know some stuff on forums and you can help me out there. But what I'm thinking is that the longer amount of time that hydrogen is running to this thing, the, the more large clumps I'm moving, which is something that we would see here because it's a higher volume, means that I'm getting more power that's being stored in the batteries. That's what I think is going on, but I, I'm, I can't prove it at this point. So let's put this into a more practical term. The amount of average watts that was stored and ready to be used somewhere else on this system right here from the batteries, that was 126 watts on average. Uh, on system number three over here, that was 115 watts. System number two was 68 watts. And then the first system we saw way over here on the left was 38 watts. So we can see that the amount of usable power outside of you know, what it takes to self-sustain has gone up as we have kind of messed with things. So there you have it, guys. That is my episode for today. Now, don't get me wrong. There's many ways that I think we can tweak, like system number three and that perfect ratio to kind of increase the effectiveness of that electrolyzer. But that's going to be in future videos there. I want to start looking into those Weezwort things and all that fun stuff. But you know what? It isn't uh, an episode unless we create more questions, and we've created more questions, I think, revolving around this hydrogen generator. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys have found this video somewhat informative or entertaining. Thanks for watching, guys. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that, and thank you guys for all of your support recently. It's been absolutely awesome. We are approaching 30,000 subscribers, and that is, that's awesome. I mean, things have really been moving here recently, and I'm, I'm super stoked about that. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Stay awesome. Uh, peace. Brothgar out.